So that's the problem. My relationship with my ex-wife is not like the relationship most of you have with your wife. When I met Laura, she was without a doubt the most beautiful and charming woman I have ever met. We met in college while I was studying for my bachelor's degree in engineering and dated for over a year before we first proposed. When I'm with her, I can barely breathe. This woman took my breath away. I'm obsessed with her. I couldn't take my eyes off him. I think everything he does is absolutely perfect. In my opinion, it is almost perfect. But this ointment has one big drawback. Outside of my partial world, not everything is perfect. Fantasy and reality are very different. When I proposed to Laura, she refused. I know when I will be rejected, so I gave up my life with her and moved on. Oh, we still hung out from time to time, but I never thought we'd become a couple. But women like Laura experience intense itching under the skin. Even if you want them to go away, they won't go away easily. In a way, they are like an illegal substance that can be addictive. I compare it to having to drink two cups of coffee every morning to function in this world. If I drink one cup, I can continue, but I prefer two cups. The same goes for Laura. If I hang out with her, it's better than not hanging out with her, and it's better than hanging out with someone else. I need a certain amount before I start the day. I know it's hard to explain, but if you've ever been addicted to anything, you know what I'm talking about. It's impossible to explain. This defies all logic. That's all. However, Laura's problem is that she refuses to look for solutions that will have a significant long-term effect. Laura was the woman I wanted, but the woman I knew would do me no good. In fact, Laura physically cannot live with one partner. Sounds fun, right? I thought so. But Laura was and remains convinced that she could not live with a man. It took me a long time to accept this. Believe me, I think this woman is mentally ill. Tolerating such behavior in a serious relationship was completely alien to me. So I went to meet other girls and decided to continue my search for the perfect escort. During the search, I found several suitable candidates. Over about two years, I met at least five women who I thought would make great life partners. But for one reason or another, none of them worked out. Two people need special help and want to plan their lives from the first meeting. We planned how many children we would have, where we would live, what prints we would have on the curtains in the house, and what pretty tableware we would have for special occasions. For me, it was too much, too fast. So I moved forward, but very carefully, because I believe that self-destruction is unacceptable unless it is a strategic decision that leads to better long-term results. Some women are very liberated and make it clear that they are not interested in marriage. So I played with them for a few months and then left. One thing was especially unusual, his decision to become an Episcopal priest. His call to God came so suddenly that I did not expect it, but I believe that what truly makes you happy is what you should do. Despite the tension, he still talked to Laura from time to time and saw her in clubs and other places. It also goes through a series of rapid courtship periods that can last from a few days to several months. I was busy studying and decided that this was my top priority. After graduating with honors from college, I found a job in the Seattle area. I soon realized that I wanted more and left the company for two years. I will tell you later, when I returned to Seattle, I went back to work for the same company I worked for. In a way, it was as if I hadn't walked, but everything was different. I haven't been home for two years. I didn't have time, and I certainly didn't meet Laura or talk to her. Honestly, after she rejected me, I decided that I needed to move on. I can take the hint. I know when I'm not needed. So I had a new mission in life to become a great engineer, make a lot of money, and maybe meet someone who will make me happy and start a family. This is what I want, but we don't always get what we want. One Friday night, a few months after my return to Seattle, I went for a drink and a snack during happy hour at a downtown restaurant frequented by people willing to pay full price for beer and coffee just in the right place. But heck, I lived in a small studio downtown and could easily get home, so I stayed and thought I'd try to meet some nice women. When I looked down, who do I see, Lala? She asked me what was going on in my life. I spoke about this without omitting details. Your point of view and comments are interesting. I felt like he was keeping it in his head to use later. I thought she thought I was a lonely loser who couldn't date women. A few nights later, Laura called and asked to come over. I was a little surprised to learn that she had kept my cell phone number for almost three years. When I moved to Canada, I didn't even change my number because their cell phone plans were very expensive and it was cheaper for me to keep my number and plan. Anyway, I thought, what's going on? 
Why not? That's why I invited her to come. I found a bottle of wine and quickly cleaned the kitchen and living room. Since my apartment is not very big, it only took me a few minutes. I was loading the dishwasher and turning it on when the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was greeted by a very pleasant woman. Hey Dan, Laura, come in. She hugged me and kissed me. We had a few drinks, sat and talked like long-lost friends. I was very interested in his sudden appearance. Right now, what's your agenda? Laura is always thinking about her future and always planning her next move. Usually you have a plan B and a plan C in your pocket. What am I? Am I the savior of a boring boy? Didn't he want to understand that his time with her was over? Of course, after a little conversation, she skillfully revealed the purpose of her trip. He wants to start dating again. She wants to go on a date with me. I wonder what changed his sudden decision to date me. I mean, if I wasn't the same person before, what suddenly makes me the one who is now number one on his dance card? I figured she hadn't changed much in the past two years, so she must have experienced some kind of awakening or realization. I don't know what this understanding is, but what exactly? I finally agreed. A year later, Mayu and Laura got engaged. I know what you're thinking. My little brain thinks for my big brain. She's already rejected you once. I have a ring in my pocket. I knelt before her and asked her to marry me. She said no. Then I realized that I was not the right person for her. This is one of the reasons why I went to Canada. The two years I have left have flown by very quickly. I studied and worked 12, 16 hours a day and rarely had time to party. I used this time to learn everything I could about my career and take advantage of the world-class opportunities offered to me by Canadian universities. The past year has challenged my expectations of what a normal relationship should be. You know, I didn't want to propose to Laura, but they turned me down again. Every time he wanted to hit the ball, Lucy took the ball out of his hands and I felt like Charlie Brown. She felt a little embarrassed this time, but the way she asked was different. Laura is an enigma. She told me she loved me. She told me she wanted to be with me, but we needed to be together to meet her needs. He knew he could get me in almost any way. I know she knows that I really shouldn't have let her in after she turned me down that night. I should have said, sorry, Laura, I'm not interested, but I didn't. I'm weak when it comes to her and she knows it. The influence of a woman who attracted me more than anyone else, but who knew that she was not suitable for me and proposed marriage. You know what my answer is? This time we talked about our relationship. We have reached an agreement that despite some concerns, I believe will make us happy as a couple. At least that's what I thought. The point is that we can all have relationships with other people. The commitments we have agreed upon contain rules that we both must respect. There are limits on what we can do, who we can do it with, and how much time we can spend with other people. I felt that one day we would get married. Again, to me, this means that Laura is my priority, and I hope to be her priority too. But we have to make rules to live away from each other. If I didn't agree, I know Laura would eventually disappear from my life and I would regret it. I may regret accepting this lifestyle. Every time I think too much, my stomach turns. He knew he had to be very careful with her and not be too possessive. He is disgusted with becoming a caveman outside of his bedroom. In my opinion, agreeing to an open marriage is like giving a drug addict a little every day to chase away the cravings that would otherwise take over. If Laura knew that she could have multiple partners and have her needs met, her desires would eventually be controlled. I don't know if this is good or bad, but this is what we should do for our marriage. As stupid as it may sound, my attraction to Laura is inexplicable. I guess you can say that I love him unconditionally. If accepting an open marriage means I can have one, then I will do it. Some of you might think that I'm really stupid and spoiled, and maybe you're right. I mean, what kind of man would allow his wife to be with another man without consequences for the marriage? But we sat down and had a series of intimate conversations about what an open marriage meant for both of us and what our personal expectations were. Here are some things we discussed. We set limits. Who, what, where, when, and how much. I was afraid that Laura would come into contact with strangers. The potential for a bad ending is high, and that's honestly what worries me the most. There must be a certain degree of familiarity and close attention on the part of the other party. We also have strict rules. No one is allowed to bring strangers into our apartment. We made a schedule of what we were going to do together and promised that no contact would stop us. We also strive to limit extramarital affairs to no more than once a month. We try to coordinate so we can act simultaneously. But we accept that if priorities are not high on the agenda, 
We will be flexible. We set emotional boundaries. When a casual relationship turns into love, what does that mean for our marriage? I told Laura that if she was looking for love, tell me directly and honestly. If his love for me is so weak, perhaps we shouldn't get married. I don't say this too harshly, but this is the essence of our conversations about love and sex. Sex with other partners excludes love. I know that most people find it difficult to have sex with someone they don't have deep feelings for, but it should be one of the defining characteristics of an open marriage. I don't want to share my wife's love. I want to be the only man she loves. I want her to be the only woman I love. How much time can you spend with other partners? There are time restrictions, which means no overnight or weekend stays. Our marriages should be the highest priority of our time. Plan how often we will review what we are doing and decide whether to continue, change something, or stop altogether. We agreed to discuss something new every two weeks. This won't be our date. For us, it's just fun, so we thought Sunday might be the best time. We agreed to be open and honest with each other about issues, including jealousy. This will mark the end of the open marriage contract. Human emotions are always present and difficult to ignore. We cannot allow jealousy to affect our marriage. It all seems so clinical, maybe cynical, and maybe wrong. But we agreed that we would try to make it work. The first two years of marriage went like this. Then it stopped working. Laura was happy. I was very happy then. Life is busy and we have to come to terms with the fact that each of us has our own personal life. Silently, oh, with what silence we continue to live separately as husband and wife. Laura had many lovers and I dated two different women before the number was whittled down to one. We host many family events such as holidays, weekends, and leisure activities. I'm a cyclist and enjoy competing in local races in Washington and Oregon. My performance wasn't bad, but I rarely won. If I could finish in the top 10, I would consider it a good day. I have two bicycles. One is a Trek road racer and my main bike is a Rocky Mountain Growler, which I bought for under $1,000. It's complex and meets my needs. I have no illusions that I will become a champion or a participant in the Tour de France, but I really enjoy it and it is very good training. When I can't ride my bike, I run or try to go to the gym. My mom and dad recently retired. My father is an engineer and earns a lot of money. You invested everything in technology from the very beginning and are now reaping the benefits. He and his mother bought a van, a giant monster, and traveled around North America. I have a brother who is studying to become a doctor, which takes a lot of time, and a sister who wants to become a lawyer and sue doctors. She made this joke every time she saw our brother. He didn't smile. As far as I know, neither my brother nor sister are married or in a serious relationship. I began my education with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Washington State University. I love learning how to make things work, how to develop new solutions to complex problems, and how to do it responsibly. We cannot continue to pollute the planet and still have a place to live. I wanted to take it further and went back to school to get a master's degree in mechanical engineering. This university in Eastern Canada is one of the best in the world for training professional engineers. So I worked hard there for two years, learned from the best, and got there. My wife, Laura Marie Donaldson, is from Seattle. As I said, we met at the University of Washington. He studied business administration and initially worked for a large industrial company specializing in computers and software. Laura currently works in the commercial lending department of a large national bank. Their income is so high that they even pay their employees a bonus of about 20% of their annual salary. His family is in the area. His parents are still alive, but his father recently retired. He spent his military career as an officer and was a very calm and serious person. Her mother, an elementary school teacher, planned to retire at the same time as Laura's father. You plan to travel as much as possible. Laura has a sister who lives in California. Laura is about five feet seven inches tall and weighs only 125 pounds. She's a very beautiful blonde. If she wanted, she could become a Victoria's Secret model. I think that's why she attracts so many men who are on fire and say she's mine. Well, I won the lottery, but not by much. I seem to share my lottery winnings a lot more often than I'd like. Two years after our wedding, Mo's cell phone rang. He woke me up. I knew I needed to check it out. This is important because it could be Laura. She spent the night at a friend's house. It's already 6 a.m. We shouldn't do this. Spending the night there is prohibited. I don't know how we can include this in any agreement that we reach. I suspect this deal has been canceled. This doesn't make me happy. I tried to talk about it, but I kept putting it off. I looked at the screen. This is a number I don't recognize. 
I decided not to answer as it was probably an unsolicited call from Mumbai telling me that there was something wrong with my computer. But since Laura wasn't home, she knew she had to answer to be sure. I answered in a weak voice. Good afternoon. Hearing a scream on the other end of the line, I immediately perked up and sat up in bed. Laura, is that you? His voice trembled, and I immediately realized that there was a big problem. He cried and sobbed and tried to speak. And here I am, Laura. What happened, Laura? You must come and pick me up immediately. Where are you? I'm in the center of Warfield. I know where it is. What's happening? What's happened? You should come and get me. You have to give me change. Please come soon. I tried to ask him about some details, but he hung up, gave the room number, and repeated that he needed clothes. I grabbed her canvas bag and ran to her car. We lived in a rented three-room apartment in Kirkland. It's close to the city center, but in case of an emergency, it seems like it would take forever to get there. Luckily, it was still early and there were no traffic jams. I stopped in front of the hotel, took my bag and ran to the elevator. When I reached the ground where she lay, I went the wrong way and had to turn around. The few seconds it lasted seemed like an hour. I knocked on the door and called my wife. I heard movement on the other side of the door and it slowly opened. When I entered the room, what I saw surprised me. Laura ran up to me and I hugged her tightly. It was obvious that Laura had been beaten. I was almost speechless. I picked her up and carried her to bed. I'm here, my love. You are now safe. No one will hurt you anymore. My heart started pounding and I realized my blood pressure had reached heart attack levels. I was angry, very angry. But at that moment, I had other priorities. I needed to get Laura out of there as quickly as possible and take her to the hospital. Darling, you must have this. I took out the clothes I bought her and helped her put them on. I looked around to see where his things were, but I couldn't find his clothes. I found her leather bag, and inside was her purse and other things. I called his cell phone to see if he was hiding, and heard a ringtone under the bed. I pulled it out of its hiding place and threw it, along with her purse, into the bag in which she carried her gym clothes. MWE left and got into my car. I went to the nearest emergency room, but she put her hand on my shoulder and told me to take her home. God, you need to see a doctor. Maybe. Now please take me home. I reluctantly agreed to take her home. When we entered the apartment, she immediately went to the bedroom and then to the shower. He stayed there for almost an hour. Laura took a shower, put on flannel pajamas, and went to bed. I know we will have difficult discussions in the future, but for now, he needs rest and healing. He slept for almost 12 hours before he showed up in the kitchen. I was sitting at the kitchen counter when I heard her walking barefoot down the hallway. When I invited her to sit, she looked at me shyly. I made him vegetable soup and a chicken sandwich. Update required. How are you? A little better. Helps you shower and sleep. The expression on my face probably expressed everything I was thinking. Go to the doctor and don't argue. I called to make an appointment. After I eat and get dressed, I will take you there. Laura frowned slightly and said she would rather ignore the elephant in the room than see a doctor. I told them you were abused and I want to take a whole list of tests. He looked at the bowl of soup and although he didn't argue, I could tell he didn't want to see a doctor at all. Half an hour later, we were in the car and walked a few blocks to the doctor. When I called the nurse, I honestly told her what happened and what needed to be done. It was clear that Laura had arrived. My first priority is to provide medical care to my wife. My second goal was to find out who he was with at the hotel and then visit that person. The doctor came out after examining Laura and the expression on his face spoke for itself. What happened to your wife? He continued without waiting for my answer. Because I think I'm going to call the police now. I nodded and exhaled. Call, she won't let me do this. After the police took statements from Laura and the doctor, several hours passed and we returned home. In my case, I need to find a solution before I go too far. But first we went home. We didn't say much to each other for the next few days. I think Laura would like to forget about everything. You hope the problem will go away over time, but it's not that simple. Three weeks have passed, and Laura has already been back at work for two weeks. I took a few days off and then went back to work. It was very cold in our apartment. I know I need to address the elephant in the room. So after dinner on Friday, I poured Laura a glass of wine and said, Laura, we need to talk. There was pure panic in his gaze. I sat down at the table and told him to do the same. You might think it's a little formal, but that's exactly what I wanted. This shouldn't be a casual conversation. This conversation should define the relationship. 
Laura, I'm afraid of you. I don't want you to get hurt physically, but right now, I don't know if you'll do what you have to do or if you're willing to do what you have to do to protect yourself when we agree. Have an open wedding. I'm afraid you'll get hurt or die. I want you to stop dating other men. At that moment, I thought or, but did not say it out loud. The difference for me is that I cannot continue to marry her and see her destructive behavior. I was so angry with her that I was shaking. I got up and started walking around the room. I had to remind myself to stay calm and sit down, which I did. I'm very worried about you. What you did was reckless and stupid. What do you think you're doing? Laura looked at the table, visibly shocked. Dan, I think this is great. I had met him before and this was the second time we met at the hotel. It used to be cute. I started smoking. Well, damn it. Did you break or forget any of the rules we agreed on at the wedding? Because in my opinion, it is. You didn't say everything you normally should have said. I can't trust you anymore. What should I think? What I should do? Laura was silent and looked at the wine in her glass. He took a deep breath and then let it out, as if he had been holding his breath for hours. I took a sip and continued to describe what I considered necessary. Laura, I won't be here long. I can't handle this anymore. I worry about you all the time and I know I will be hurt by the mess we are going through. He raised his head and looked at me with a lonely expression. What I just told him was something he didn't expect. She didn't say anything. Laura knew that my love for her was so deep that I could bear a lot. I mean, I agreed to let her have sex with other people so I could be closer to her. I have dated another woman on and off, so it is fair to say that we are both equally responsible for our current situation. When we got married, I thought that all this would quickly pass, especially when we had children. I know that children are more important than anything in the world, so I think this will help us. We would all live monogamously. Our penance will be in the rearview mirror. We could have been a normal family, but we weren't. Laura asked me to pretend to be her for safety reasons. This is normal. We are a normal couple who have a career and a future. Over the past year, Laura's business has grown from monthly to weekly. We are having less and less sex. As I spent less and less time with my wife, I spent more quiet time at work and got to know the woman better. I met her at the university. Her name is Sarah Ann Walker. She is about 30 years old, divorced, and has a two-year-old daughter. Sarah is an architect and has worked on many of the projects I worked on during my master's degree. Sarah has beautiful brown hair, and although you may not think of her as particularly beautiful, she has classic features and a demeanor that will instantly captivate you. She is about 1.70 meters tall, has a slender figure and elegant movements. I was attracted to her when I first saw her. He is probably the smartest person I know with insight and wisdom beyond his years. Shortly after we met, we worked together for about a month on a construction project for a technology company. They wanted it to be environmentally friendly, which meant we had to implement the latest standards to ensure we had the lowest possible carbon footprint. I can build almost anything and make it carbon neutral, but it costs money. Many companies want to be able to boast about their environmental friendliness and at the same time maintain budget. That's why Sarah and I work together on designs and work hard to meet our clients' needs. It means spending long days together and getting to know each other better. One thing led to another, and we quickly developed a mutually beneficial friendship. We all have needs, and we talk about ourselves and our families. I suggested that Laura meet with her and talk to make sure everything was clear. I hide nothing. I know some of you reading this will think this is a little weird or that I'm a complete idiot, but that's exactly who we are or were. The psychology of love and attraction is not always entirely logical. What attracts one man to one woman may not attract another woman. Some men like tall women, while others like short women. Some men like thin women, while others like curvy ones. Everyone is different and desires change over time. This is one of the reasons for almost 50% of divorces if we were always completely satisfied with our partner, we wouldn't get divorced. I have a good friend who is several years older than me. He's about 1.70 M, tall and slim. He weighed about 150 pounds and was madly in love with his wife, who was the same height as him but had a curvy figure. She is not fat, but she has the right curves and is a very beautiful woman. They were very much in love with each other and had four children. I envy him and his luck. So I was attracted to Sarah and she was attracted to me. Our arrangement was exactly what I needed. It's very stable. Unlike Laura, who loves to find new and different partners, I need a stable relationship. Are you just asking? What the hell do you do with a woman who wants to have sex with other men? 
You are right to ask this question. I asked myself the same question several times and got the answer each time because I thought I was emotionally stupid when it came to Laura. I mean, despite our obvious love for each other, there is still a part of my wife that can't be with me, and that's the part that hurts the most. This recent incident at a hotel in Seattle was a great learning experience for me. Something must change in our relationship. This meant that Laura was monogamous with me, or our marriage was over. I knew deep down that our open prenup would not survive. Ultimately, I want to start a family, so the simple fact is that if we had children, we would not be able to continue our current lifestyle. We must change. I have to change my mind. I must survive. So that Friday night, we sat down and had a very open discussion. I told Laura I would be away from her for several weeks. This is not discussed. We all need space to figure out what's important to us and what the path forward will look like, together or individually. Lala looked at me with a pained expression on her face. Dan, please don't leave me. I promise I will do better to fulfill our agreement. Laura, I'm not sure you remember our agreement. You continue to ignore everything necessary for us to agree on whether we want to get married and allow you and me to see other people from time to time. But the situation is coming to an end. I took a sip of beer. Please don't sit here and say it didn't happen. I'm not that stupid and gullible. God, there are still bruises on your body and the mark on your butt hasn't completely disappeared yet. Laura took a sip of wine and looked at the table. His lack of reaction meant he was fine, or at least I was right, even if I wasn't. I continued, I'm going away for a while. I can't stand here and watch you destroy yourself. I will not do this. You need to be clear about what you want. If you want to stay married to me, we need to make some changes and we need to make them now. Otherwise, I think we're screwed. This is my resume. I looked at Laura and she continued to look at the table, not saying anything. His silence said it all. I know deep down that she won't change. She wouldn't be my wife, and she wouldn't be the woman I really wanted. The silence in the room was deafening. The moment I looked at her and she refused to look at me, I knew exactly what she wanted. It's not me. I got up from the table, went to the bedroom, and started packing my things. I thought I'd need enough stuff for a week. By the end of the week, I know if I will have to move permanently, or if our marriage is hopeless. Laura said nothing as she gathered what she needed. I left with my suitcase, gym bag, and laptop bag. I grabbed a few extra items from the closet next to the front door. My bike and helmet are in a storage room in the underground parking lot. Attaching them to the trunk of the car didn't take long. My car is actually a small Subaru Crosstrek SUV. My bike rack was recessed into the trailer so it was easy to install and remove. The Crosstrek has been a great car for me, it has great all-wheel drive and plenty of room for all my sports gear. It's also cheaper to use and easier to park. It's the best of all worlds and can't be broken. Soon I loaded my things into the car and slowly drove away. Laura stayed in the apartment. Deep down, I knew I was leaving my marriage and my old life. Laura, okay, I ruined it. I was fine and now I was bothering the only guy who was willing to put up with me and give me what I wanted. Dan is a wonderful, wonderful husband. I set the terms of our marriage and now I have destroyed it. Why can't I be happy with a man who loves me? Why do I need stimulation every week? Oh God, I want this every day. What should I do then? Dan thought he needed help. Psychological help. Maybe. He saved me a few weeks ago when I was having a lot of trouble with a guy I knew liked to be tough. This bastard is finished. I don't go near him. Dan may have been angry that I went to the hotel that night with this guy but I really didn't expect things to turn out this way. It is my problem, I don't think. Maybe I really need help. It may already be too late. I thought it was too late to save my marriage. It was too late to save my relationship with Dan. Dan, I moved in with a friend the first few days. Sleeping in his spare room quickly became boring and I decided I needed a break. So I called the company, arranged a few weeks off and got on my bike to head into the hills east of the city. I needed to get out of the house, de-stress, clear my head, and figure out what was important to me. It took me several days without thinking about anything to solve Lala's problem. On the fourth night, I took out my notebook and wrote down a few things that came to mind. Since I work with technology every day, you would think that I would use the notes feature on my phone for this. But this time, I went the old route and used pen and paper. The most important question that comes to my mind every time is how to divorce my wife. When I decided to marry Laura, I decided it was worth sharing the fear that she would be my wife 90% of the time. This is 90% better than 0%. At least that's what I thought at the time. Now I'm not so sure. 
The 10% I don't have destroys 90% of what I have. Does this still make sense? Lately, it seems to me that he spends a maximum of 20% of his time with me. I felt like a burden in his life. He often forgets what we're doing and calls me at the last minute to tell me he's doing something else. I understood the second meaning very clearly. She is my wife in name only. We are connected only by one piece of paper. I thought about it later. And yes, I have to visit my husband from time to time. Mountain biking on 80 miles of forest trails can give you a new perspective on life. If you do this for five days in a row, you may question your strongest beliefs. I made a few decisions this week. I know what solution I need. During this time, I isolated myself from everyone. My phone was turned off, and I spent the night in a small motel in the mountains with virtually no cable television, let alone internet. I cleared my mind and body, returned to the city for the weekend, and used the rental services. I returned with a piece of paper on which I wrote my deepest thoughts. This is also where I make decisions about my existence and my future. Returning to civilization, I spent some time doing repairs and plumbing. First, I needed to clean my gear and get ready. I love being in a hot shower for almost 30 minutes with a cold beer in my hand. Now it's time to collect your thoughts and perform the next set. Sarah, I tried to contact Dan last week. I called his office and they said he was on vacation but had no idea what he was doing. I also called him and left him a message. I know he and his wife have an open marriage and she enjoys dating other men. I knew Dan didn't really like the idea. I also want to say that our relationship is very informal. We have no mutual obligations and I have no expectations. Dan and I usually meet once a week. That's all. Just fun. It's good to let off steam. I think he and his wife will eventually put the idea of an open marriage out of their heads. If they decide to have children, it will be a turning point for them and they will eliminate the difficulties associated with others. They will discover the necessity of monogamy. This is absolutely necessary for a successful family. My own husband decided early in our marriage that monogamy was not important to his needs. He also discovered that being a father was not for him and decided that he was better off not getting married. We are divorced. It would be better for all of us if he moved east, somewhere to Connecticut. I think it's Hartford. He works for an insurance company. Every month I see a small check for child support. I deposited the check into my daughter's education account. He was only two years old and didn't even remember his father. Fortunately, I hardly remember this either. Dan is basically a good guy. He has a keen sense of what is right and what is wrong. So I was surprised when he told me that he and his wife had an open marriage. As I got to know him better, I understood why. The question, why, is simple. On the most basic level, he loves his wife, but at the same time, knows that she will never be completely his. She could never give herself completely to him. In an effort to promote open marriage, he met me and we became useful friends. We have been friends in the service for several months now, and I must say that everything is going very well. When we started, I didn't need commitment. My ex burned me and I won't let that happen again. The deal is also beneficial for Dan. He saw a different side to relationships with women. I understood him very well and told him straight up that what we were experiencing was just fun and that I didn't expect any commitment from him or anyone else. It also means I won't have to deal with the whole dating game. God knows I don't have time for that. So Dan was good to me and I was good to him. I just don't know how long we can continue this. He is a good guy. Laura, Dan left me. He packed a few things and headed out on his mountain bike. I don't know where he went. I called some of his friends and colleagues, but they didn't know where he was. And if they do, they don't say it. I'm not entirely sure what exactly your problem is. I mean, before we got married, we agreed that we could date other people. He knows what I need. He agreed to let me see other men. I know he's a good guy. He's a great husband. This man did everything I wanted him to do. So why now? Why is this so hard for you to deal with? Yes, the situation with the hotel guy was too strong, but that was only one time. Dan has a girlfriend. He's with a woman. I think her name was Susan. I have no idea. I don't remember this clearly. I think he met her at work or something. He told me something about himself, but I forgot most of what he said. So what's your problem? Dan returns. He will face his pain and return. This man cannot leave me for long. Oh my God, I rejected him the first time he proposed to me and then he came back. He was absent for a long time and did not call. Maybe when you realize what you're missing, you'll come to your senses. I might call you in a few days, Dan. So the last two weeks have given me the opportunity to reflect on my life, evaluate the mistakes I've made, what I want and what I need to do to achieve it in my life. Looking back over the past few years, 
I'm not sure marrying Laura was the best decision. Yes, she was beautiful and rocked my world, but that's where it all began and ended. Perhaps I was desperate when we decided to get married. Perhaps he saw in me resistance to his crazy habits. I think she thinks so, too. I am her refuge when she comes home. I can't do this anymore. I still need a few days to understand everything, and then I will have to return to normal life. Sarah wrote to me yesterday. She asked me if I was okay. I wrote a two-word answer, and that's what I was going to do. She replied, If you need help, tell me. Your text makes me happy. Sarah is a real person. Even though we were just friends with benefits, she made me feel like she truly cared about me. Perhaps this is the essence of motherhood. I want to be a father. But deep down, I knew that Laura was not the woman who could become the mother of my children. It was a nightmare, but now I know better what to do to stop it. Sarah, I haven't heard from Dan in two weeks. While that in itself isn't a big deal, I still feel bad for him. So I decided to write to him. I had to tell him that I knew his wife was, how should I put it, completely crazy. Laura is using Dan. He uses it to create the illusion of a normal life and as a safe place to stay after hanging out with his many friends. Yes, I know that sounds harsh, but as far as I know, it describes her exactly. Dan is a very loving person and deserves better than for her to take advantage of him. I saw my marriage fall apart. My husband was so immature that after Matilda was born, he decided that being a father and husband was not in his future. He left us both and took a mistress. When I found out about this, I kicked him out of the house. He was almost giddy as he walked away, knowing that his duty to me, my dear, had been fulfilled. I don't even think about it anymore, other than my biannual child support checks. I do not need money. My career as an architect has been very fruitful. What I really need is a man with character, values, and a strong sense of right and wrong. Dan could be that guy. I don't want her or Dan to see Laura destroy herself, but I will watch and do what I think is right. I won't make the same mistakes as before. I know it may seem cold, but Laura's loss could be my gain. Cargo, stupidity, I'm tired. It's more mental than physical. I went for a long run this morning, and it felt good to work hard and sweat. When I set off at 5 a.m., there were only a few runners. When I finish at 8 in the morning, the day is already in full swing, people, and sport. This morning, I have an appointment with a divorce lawyer. I need to start this process. I need help. I met Laura, and she didn't have many material things. We rented an apartment, but we both had cars and stuff. I'm still paying off my student loans, but I'm trying to save money. I think it would be great if we had children. What a mess. Well, the meeting with the lawyer went as I expected. All I want is for the marriage to end in this state. This indicates that the marriage is irretrievably broken and there is no hope of salvation. It's simple. Without children and a lot of things to do, it becomes a very simple process. Apply to the court, and if both parties agree to the terms of termination, the court will simply seal the application and we will stop worrying. All this takes 90 days. I gave the lawyer a detailed list of our assets and liabilities and told him to take care of the paperwork. I took the divorce papers with me when I went to see Laura. I'll have to call him later this week after I filed the paperwork and set up an appointment to talk to him. It's been over two weeks since I last spoke to him. She didn't communicate via phone calls or text messages, so I suspect she was busy with one or more of her friends. I haven't talked to Sarah much, so I don't know what's going on there. She probably stayed away from me because she realized how bad my life had become. His life didn't need such complexity. I need to put Laura in the rearview mirror and get back to work. In fact, Laura's mother called me yesterday. She tried calling her daughter but hadn't heard from her in weeks. When I told him I had moved, he was speechless. There was dead silence on the line. Finally, he asked, What's wrong, Dan? What I'm trying to say is that we had our differences and I thought it would be better if we separated for a while. Laura's mother was an intelligent woman who knew a lot about her daughter's habits. I knew about Laura's drug addiction, but I hoped that after we got married, things would change. My God, Dan, are you still seeing other men? She got straight to the point. I doubted it. I'm afraid it will get worse and I won't be able to live with her in this state. She has neither the desire nor the ability to change, and I don't know how to contact her. I had to leave her for the sake of my own mental health. It's a pity. She's very calm. I understand, Dan. Do what you have to do. If there is anything I can do to help, please let me know. Having said this, he lost consciousness. Laura, I need to talk to Dan, but I'm afraid to call him. I know he felt insulted. Perhaps it would be better if I left him alone. 
I need to get out of here. I was going crazy waiting in my apartment for him to call or come home. I do not know what to do. My mom called me and gave me her ass. He told me several names that I had never heard before. He wanted to know why I betrayed Dan. I can't tell the truth now, can I? That's not what you tell your mother. So I admitted some of my stupidity and left everything as it was. Damn, my phone rang, and Dan's photo appeared on the screen. I could go home. Bye. Several seconds of silence followed. Laura, it's me. I want to talk to you. When is the right time? As much as you want, Dan. Tonight will be great. I'm canceling my original plans. Stupidity. I shouldn't have said that. What time is right? I'll be home at 6 p.m. After that, everything was fine. He left without loving you, saying goodbye, or doing anything else. His voice was cold and unhappy. I got home before Dan. He called me to come in. Don't have your keys yet? I asked him when he called. I want to make sure you're alone. Oh, shit. He thought someone might move in with me while he was gone. Come in, Dan. We go into the kitchen. Do you want something to eat? When did you learn to cook? Sorry, that was a low blow. You don't deserve this. He was always a gentleman and a good guy. He behaved, as they say, like a gentleman. This is absolutely the right word. Do you have beer or Coca-Cola in the refrigerator? Why would you take something from your own refrigerator? Oh, shit. I finally understand. I no longer had the feeling of living here. This was no longer his apartment. He is a guest. I felt pain in my lower abdomen. This discussion will not end well. I got up and went to the refrigerator. There is nothing there. I haven't eaten much at home since Dan left. There was a bottle of beer hidden in the far corner of one of the shelves, and I moved my shopping to get to it. I went to the closet where I kept my glasses and pulled out a pair for him. Thank you, he said, taking the bottle. He sat down at the table and placed the large envelope he was holding in his hand on the table next to him. He opened the beer and took a sip. He didn't use glass. I held my breath and waited for him to say something. I sat down on the table opposite him and waited for the hammer to fall. How are you, Dan? Thank you for your invitation. I think about this a lot, Laura. I think about you and me and our marriage. Why are we getting married? What I want. What do you want? I realize something and now have a better idea of what I want in the future. Here. I think I deserve your thoughts. Dan looked me straight in the eye and continued. I'm not sure what you want from marriage is the same as what I want from marriage. I don't think it's a good idea for you to marry me. I really love you, but I can no longer offer you the things and lifestyle you want. I can't be a faithful man and expect you to come back after nights and weekends with other men. This is not what I want. I looked at the man who said he loved me and was about to say that our marriage was over. I thought I loved you enough to do this, but I realize I can't do it anymore. I can't be another person in your life. I even found another woman to fill the void when you didn't want to be my permanent wife. Dan stopped and looked at me. I looked at the table in my hands. He continued in a calm voice. What is life for each of us? We can't get married part-time. This may work for you, but not for me. Never ever. Another break. Laura, I need a wife, a housewife. We broke up again. You don't want what I want. You need more than me. I just can't get enough of you. Another break. This time Dan slowly pushed the large envelope he had on the table towards me. Looking at him, I realized that our life together was over. I immediately realized that I was wrong. I used Dan for my own pleasure. I used this to let others know that I am a responsible adult who can raise a normal family. It's just a show. Dan, what's in the envelope? He looked at me, took a sip of his beer, and replied, I had a lawyer draft a motion to set aside. It split everything we had in half. I know we don't have much, another break. Laura, we are still young. We need to move on and decide what we both want. We'll all have to start over. You can do what you want and be with who you want. He took another sip of beer. You need to give it to a lawyer and ask them to look at the documents. My lawyer said that since we don't have much money, it would be fair to both of us. My lawyer's business card in an envelope. Have your lawyer contact my lawyer. I understand that once we both come to an agreement, they will file paperwork with the court and within 90 days, everything will be official. We are not married. I nodded and continued to look at the envelope as if something was about to come out. Dan, is this really what you want? Laura, I can't live like this anymore. I can't share you with anyone. I can't keep watching you walk through the door because I know what you're about to share with other men. This is not a marriage. It was a deal I could no longer live with. We all deserve better. That way you can do whatever you want without worrying about me. 
and I can find what I'm looking for. Dan took another sip, put the bottle down, and stood up. He walked to the door. I'm sorry, Laura, but I can't be with you in this situation. He went out and carefully closed the door. I noticed that he hardly drank anything from the beer bottle. I sat at the table for over an hour before I got up. I drank the rest of the bottle. I went to the phone and looked at it. I scrolled through my contact list and clicked on a specific number. Surrounded. I heard, hi, Robbie, what are you doing? Would you like to meet later? Dan, talking to Laura isn't easy. After spending almost two weeks thinking about what I wanted, I learned a lot about myself. Yes, I loved Laura, but there was a limit to what I was willing to tolerate because I understood that she did not love me. His love is conditional. She takes care of his needs first. Your needs are determined by your gender. She needs a lot of male attention, so my need for a woman is secondary. Oh, I know she said she loved me, but as my father said, actions speak louder than words. Even when he says he loves me, he thinks about other men. I won't be second anymore. The divorce process is much easier if you don't have children. I see no reason to be angry and take revenge. It's great when we do something together. But I realized that all Lara did to me was to make me happy so she could have a different life. Lara doesn't really like to ride a bike, but from time to time she rides with me. He was going to go hiking with me, but I knew he didn't really like the idea of dirt and flies. I hadn't seen or spoken to Sarah in weeks and thought she had turned to other people to get her needs met. I didn't know if I should call him, so I didn't. Laura, in three months, I will be looking for a new apartment, smaller than this one. It was more than I needed, and I wanted to live downtown and be closer to work. It will also be closer to the social part of the city that I like. Dan took a few extra items, but left most of it to me. I heard that he moved somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. His friends were very worried about him and did not say anything about him. I didn't call his family. The bank I worked for was reorganizing and I was told that I would be working in a new department in the same building. Maybe this is the change I need. I have limited my personal life and now live with a man. He's sweet and reliable. Noting that he has a good reputation, he said that he does not like to share information in groups and the like. He categorically said that if I wanted to be with someone else, he would leave. I promised him I would get better, but I knew I would fail in the end. A girl has to do what she has to do. Sarah, it's been several months since I last saw Dan. I was busy working and caring for Matilda, so time passed quickly. I was hesitant to call him because I didn't know what his current mental state was. Do you want to meet me? Are you in a new relationship or is he ending the relationship? I have no idea. Perhaps I need to do a deeper investigation. Dan, I work, I bike, I run, I do it over and over again. I was in the best shape of my life and worked hard to do everything I could. And I'm so alone in all of this. Laura didn't call me to tell me she was going to change something to save our marriage. I think this pretty much confirms what I already knew. I didn't dare go out and meet a woman. I hesitate to allow myself to become a victim again. I can't let Laura influence my opinion of other women. I mean, Sarah is nothing like Laura. Your entire outlook on life becomes more focused on what's important. Family, family, career, do the right thing and make the world a better place. I should call her and ask if she wants to meet this weekend. Maybe I could take her and Matilda camping. I'll arrange lunch. That would be great. Sarah, the weather is perfect for this. Then Dan called me this morning. Things were a little awkward at first as I hadn't heard from him in over four months. We talked for about half an hour. He told me that he had called me and asked what my plans were for the weekend and if Matilda and I wanted to go on a hike and a picnic with him. A little unexpected. Not because of the campaign, but because he invited Matilda too. He is now three years old and, as you can imagine... A child of this age has a lot of energy at first, but gets tired very quickly. In any case, I accepted the invitation. Now I need to pick up my sneakers and I don't know where they are. Dan, I'm very nervous. I decided to take my time with the hike and took more food and water with me. I have two hiking poles, but I'm not sure we need them. I brought a thin heated blanket to sit on while we ate. I even cleaned my car. Kids need car seats, right? I'm sure Sarah did it. When I arrived at Sarah's house at 10 o'clock, M, on Saturday his car seat was already in the driveway, and I saw that he had a backpack full of things. I got out of the car and Sarah greeted me with a hug and a quick kiss. She seems okay. She had shorter hair and was dressed like an existence catalog model, plaid shirt, shorts, and sneakers. Just looking at her turns me on. Although I had already met Matilda once, I introduced myself to her once again. She runs everywhere, 
and it doesn't take a child psychologist to see that she's ready for adventure. I secured the child seat in the back seat. We loaded our gear into the trunk and hit the road. I slowed down realizing for the first time in my life that there was a child in my car. I felt responsible for the safety of others in a way I had never felt before. This hike started off well, but I quickly learned that little girls need to pee often, especially after drinking a bottle of soda on the trail at the beginning of the hike. Sarah apologized, but I shrugged and said, hey, kids gotta do what they gotta do. I quickly learned to manage expectations of how far I wanted to go. Although I had planned for us to go to the observation deck to get something to eat, our youngest hiker ran out of energy before we even got there, so we stopped, spread our blankets, and ate lunch. I took a few pictures with my camera and also photographed Matilda. I didn't realize this until much later, but they interviewed me that same day. Very important work. This was a two-part interview, and both interviewers had to agree before they would let me into their lives. The interviews will indeed last several months and will be filled with many important questions and tasks. Back at Sarah's house, she invited me to have dinner with them. I looked at her, and when I didn't answer right away, she said, don't worry if you have other things to do. I stuttered to express my thoughts. No, I do not want to do anything. Thank you, I want to have dinner with you. Once inside, I took off my hiking boots at the door, and Matilda grabbed my arm and pulled me inside. He dragged me down the hall to his room and showed me his extensive collection of toys. So it's different, at least for me. He diligently displays almost every toy he owns, including every pose his Toy Story dolls can do. She pulls Woody's rope and he announces that someone has poisoned the well water. I had dinner with Sarah and Matilda. Having your baby watch you while you eat can be a little distracting. It seems like an interrogation, but they are silent. The steely gaze of a three-year-old can influence even the most determined people. Police may use this tactic. You can get more confessions from criminals. I could help prepare dinner while Matilda sat at the counter and drew. His ability to achieve this is amazing considering his age. At times I wondered if the ball would be red, yellow, or both. I suggest they come in different colors. Reaction to this, but I noticed that she used red and yellow pens. Dinner was fantastic. I helped with the cleaning and then I was invited to sit on the sofa with Matilda and read a fairy tale. I read most of it, but every time I forgot a word, I was told to go back and read that section again. I am often accused of stupidity. After Matilda went to bed, Sarah and I sat in the living room and had a drink. I don't know how you do it. As a busy mother and architect, how do you juggle it all? Sarah laughed and said, Sometimes I take my work home with me at night and usually don't get enough sleep. Sometimes it's not easy. I nodded. When we met once a month last year, we didn't talk about Matilda. So, I wanted to separate that part of myself from her. I think I have a good eye for detail. My needs are different from my daughter's. I don't want to hide it, but I won't promote it either, if that makes sense. I think I took a sip. She's a force to be reckoned with. I see you in them all the time. Sarah laughs again. She loves you. Otherwise, I wouldn't let him read to him. This made me laugh. I wanted to ask you if it was time to go, but I don't have to, Sarah. Sincerely, a real woman does not hide her true feelings, at least as far as I know. Having a young daughter gave her a different perspective. She doesn't have time to play. For Lara Croft, it's all about the game. Sarah, I know some may think I'm waiting for Dan's marriage to fail before I claim him. Maybe you're right. I know Dan is a good guy. I know what you want. He knew he would have to find out for himself. I also knew I couldn't go too fast or too far. I had to step aside and let things take their course. And they did. Dan's wife is a mess in slow motion. She couldn't see what was in front of her. She couldn't see how wonderful her husband was. A man who truly loves her. He liked it so much that he agreed to share it with her so he could spend time with her. Laura had so many problems that she thought an open marriage was a viable option. She believed that she had enough self-control to manage her own affairs without harming her husband. It's funny. She doesn't care about her husband at all. His actions speak for themselves. When I met Dan, I had just gotten divorced. My daughter was in kindergarten, and I was working too hard to have a career or make enough money to support our family. I don't want to be in a relationship with a man that leads to romance, then commitment, and all the usual stuff that a real relationship requires. No, but I also need physical contact. I'm a healthy young woman. When I met Dan and he told me how his marriage was going, I was surprised at first. I mean, what normal man would allow his wife to be with another man? 
But when I told him more about their relationship, he stressed that he wanted to give their lifestyle a chance. He also expressed the hope that Laura would eventually stop needing other men and they could become a real family. She wants her own children. Therefore, we accepted the agreement of the Friends of Social Security. Over time, I realized that Dan loved me very much and needed a wife and family who could give him that love. He tried to offer this to Laura, but she did not accept. Then I met Dan, and over time, I realized what I wanted and who I was. All I could do was wait for Laura to ruin everything. I knew she would ruin everything, and she finally did. I decided it was best to wait and give Dan time to come to his senses, understand what I wanted, and then act. My plan worked. Unable to overcome her addiction, Laura eventually pushed Dan away. Love has limits, at least when it comes to marriage. I thought this woman was so caught up in her own thoughts that she actually thought Dan would put up with his bullshit forever. How could I imagine that this could happen in the long term? He did all this much earlier than expected. Dan didn't talk much about the hotel stay, but I found out about it later. I actually discovered this completely by accident. I think one of the people I worked with knew the person who attacked her. So Laura's stupidity and inability to acknowledge what she has may be to my benefit. Dan is a great guy, and I know he wants a stable family. Matilda quickly became friends with him and loved playing with him. Dan brought her toys and gifts almost every time he saw her. Since we met, I have never had so many flowers on the table at home. I try to take my time. My choice of a good person is still zero to one. But when I see him, I know a good person. Laura, I received an email informing me that my marriage is officially over. I'm alone again. Dan, it's been almost a year since my marriage to Laura failed. The past year has been a real challenge for me. Laura caused me incredible pain. She didn't fight for us at all. When I told her that I couldn't stand her seeing other men, she didn't do or say anything to indicate that she might be willing to change to save our marriage. He showed me very clearly where I stood and how insignificant I was in their lives and thoughts. His opinion of me was so low that he could not even think about changing his lifestyle. Starting a family was the least of his worries. The children were out of sight. I want a family. He wanted the stability that a wife and children provided. I strive for such a life. Laura is not the woman I need. Divorce is inevitable. I talked to our family and they understood everything. Her family knew what kind of person Laura was. And although they all wanted her to stop being an unfaithful wife, they also understood when I left. His family wishes me the best. Just when you thought life was bad, I was saved. Two people saved me. I thank my lucky stars every day that I was saved. Sarah, I need a man who works full time. My daughter needs a father who works full time. I already have the best candidate in mind. My daughter asked me if Dan was her father. My only answer now is, that would be great, wouldn't it? She nodded. It's time to move forward a little. Dan, I have a plan for the summer. This includes traveling and camping, but in a way that makes sense for all of us. My father and mother had a caravan. It's a huge thing that I call a sand yacht. It was one of dad's toys and he and mom always traveled with it. They were willing to lend it to me if I wanted it, but it had never occurred to me to carry something so big and bulky before. I had a completely different idea about camping. On the other hand, I have never camped overnight with a small child. My father is not one to do things halfway. And when Laura and I separated, he congratulated me on finally achieving my goal. I'm an idiot, but I know he only wants the best for me. At first I thought his comments were stupid, but I knew he knew Laura and I had a complicated relationship. He actually told me in his usual way that he was glad my life was okay. He is a typical father. My parents also knew that Sarah and I were together. And one day they met Sarah and Matilda when I was leaving something at my parents' house. My mother welcomed Sarah and Matilda like kings. She took care of Matilda and took her home to feed her snacks and milk. I think my mother thought that Matilda would be the closest granddaughter to me. I followed my father's example and decided to stay away. But now I'm starting to look at life differently. I went from just me to we. I didn't think about what would be best for me, but began to think about what could be best for Sarah and Matilda. As summer approaches and I begin to think about hiking, I realized that hiking with small children is not the same as my usual hikes. I love to carry everything I need with me and go on mountain hikes. Laura never did this to me. She doesn't like to be outside. There were too many bugs and too much dust for her, so I never did that to her. This time it should be completely different. I'm not entirely sure that driving a huge 30-foot trailer with a huge diesel engine is the right choice, 
but as my pragmatic father used to say, women have to pee a lot, especially at night, and they don't like to be walking through the woods in the dark and suddenly come face to face with a raccoon or maybe a bear. So grab the damn trailer and enjoy, and it's free. What exactly do you have to lose? This statement made me decide to go on a sandy yacht vacation. My father and mother are financially secure. My father is a very smart man who not only worked very hard but also invested wisely from the very beginning and is now benefiting from it. He loves his big toys and is proud of his technology. The van is equipped with all modern amenities and even has a satellite receiver and internet connection. My biggest challenge is figuring out how to make this work without killing all of us or anyone else. Sarah was skeptical about the idea at first, but Matilda was very enthusiastic about it. We even went to my parents' house and my father let them look around and showed them everything there. I informed him of our arrival and he connected everything to electricity and water. The air conditioning kept things cool and the TV was on above the front bed. Matilda's mother brought freshly prepared food and even showed her where to sleep. There is a berth above the cabin. My father even offered to give us a ride in the van he thought would get us to our destination. I gave up and figured out how to put a bike rack in the back. So in mid-July, after taking a few driving lessons with my dad and finally deciding I was ready to go, we headed to Wyoming, then through a few other states to Colorado and back home. I think this is a crucial decision. At the end of this journey, Sarah and I will know if we have a future together. In my opinion, being together for such a long time and the birth of a little son was a test of our compatibility. I'm afraid I won't be able to satisfy Sarah's desires in a relationship. I was also concerned about my ability to interact with Matilda. I was nervous about the trip and decided to leave raising to Sarah and follow Matilda's example. The last thing she wanted to do was do something that could undermine her authority as a mother. I have found that while a three-year-old may have a plan, Matilda does. My dad installed a real car seat for Matilda in the van so Sarah could see Matilda up close while driving. Matilda had lots of toys and books to keep her busy, and we took breaks often. We had a lot to do and see, which meant Matilda quickly fell asleep in her seat when we left. Sarah, oh my God. Matilda and I sat with Dan in his parents' huge trailer. We spent the summer together. The project started as a camping trip and turned into a luxury trip. I've never done this before, but after a few days, I have to say it was very nice to have a comfortable bed to sleep in and a great bathroom. Matilda enjoyed doing things with Dan and would try her best to monopolize him from the time he got up to the time he went to bed. Dan insisted that we avoid the luxury of the caravan every day and do a lot of walking and cycling. I had a designated seat for Matilda in the back of my bike, but on this trip I had the pleasure of letting Dan put her on his bike. Matilda also noted that I think this trip will be interesting for all of us. I know Matilda was very happy, and so was I. I saw a side of Dan that confirmed my opinion of him. He's a real man. He was smart, loving, caring, and desperately wanted to start a family. I see it in everything he does. The look he gave me when he was with Matilda. The look he gave me when we were alone. So I enjoyed this trip too, especially after Matilda went to bed and Dan and I spent some time alone. When our vacation ended, I almost needed another vacation to take a break from traveling. I returned to work and Matilda returned to kindergarten. She wanted me to take her to Dan, so I had to explain to her that he also needed to get back to work. I think she understood, but she was sad that he wasn't there, Dan. And so the big adventure on a sandy yacht was crowned with success. We brought the truck and thanked my parents for using this beast. Matilda loaded my mother into the truck and proudly showed her how to lower the bunk bed she slept on and where the switch was. Once the bed was in place, he set up the ladder and climbed up. My mother was ecstatic when she thought that maybe, just maybe, she would soon have a grandchild. My father walked around the car, examining it critically and asking me all the usual questions he knew I would get. Did I flush the tank correctly? Have I filled the tank? Everything is important to him. Yes, Dad. I did everything you told me and we cleaned everything inside. I laughed inside. I knew that my father would walk barefoot on broken glass to do whatever Sarah or Matilda needed. Wow. Two weeks later, I invited Sarah on a day trip in my SUV. We're on our way. Judging by the weather forecast, the weather will definitely be good. We had some great sailing trips and although we didn't have the capabilities of the sand dock, we were still able to do it. I had the opportunity to try it out and see if my larger plan would work. Laura, it's been over a year since I last saw Dan. 
I moved to a new apartment closer to work. I was with different men, but my basic needs were not met. I have to say that after Dan left, I began to wonder what my life would be like. I mean, I'm still young. I had a lot of time to settle down and get married again. Now I know that taking Dan for granted was not a good idea. Not good. I should have paid more attention to him, but I think he understood what I wanted. I think he doesn't care what I do as long as I give him attention from time to time and we act like a normal couple. After the wedding, things didn't go well. He likes to be outside and I don't like getting dirty. He also loved the theater and wanted to see it, but I was bored and preferred to go to parties and dance. As we walked out to do this, I looked at some of the people present and realized that Dan could imagine me doing this. Two months ago, I had health problems and I turned to an obstetrician gynecologist for examination. She diagnosed me, prescribed me medication and advised me to abstain from sex for the next few weeks until my symptoms subsided and the next test came back negative. He also advised my partner to take protective measures. She knows some of my history, Dan, so my plan is going well. I spoke kindly to Matilda, told her what I wanted to do, and asked her permission to propose to her mother. I wonder if I did this, would she want me to be her father? His answer was clear, yes. Then I told him that I wanted to surprise his mother so that I wouldn't have to tell her anything, and he got really angry. The girl was beside herself with excitement. I was wondering how long this secret would be kept, so I planned a weekend of camping for us, Sarah. For the past few days, Matilda has been looking at me with big eyes and great emotions. She laughs every time she looks at me. I told her that the three of us were going camping on Saturday, and she ran to the room to pack her things, and it was only Thursday. Dan wanted to go for a walk and have a picnic in his favorite park. When we got out of the car, he grabbed Dan's hand and whispered something in his ear. He nodded, and she looked at me with a smile. Something happened. I have a good idea what it could be. When we got to the seating area, everything was ready, and my daughter could barely stand. She turned and almost looked away. Dan looked at her and asked, Do you think now is the time? She nodded and laughed. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen next. Do not lie to me. Dan reached into his backpack and pulled out a small box. Oh my God, he really did it. He knelt down, took my hand, and looked into my eyes. Sarah, I love you very much, and I hope that our family will always be together. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? I waited impatiently for his words, and when they came, they were as impressive as I had imagined. This invitation is not only for me, but also for my daughter. We made a full proposal, but he knew it and told him our proposal before the hike was even planned. Matilda knew about Dan's plan from the very beginning. She wanted him to be her father, just like I wanted him to be my husband and he wanted me to be his wife. I've been dreaming about this day since I camped on Dan's parents' land yacht. This convinced me that he was the right man for me and the right father for little Matilda, so I waited. Yes, Dan jumped on me and kissed me. Matilda ran up to the two of us and hugged us. Cargo. Well, you could say that I surprised Sarah, but that's a bit of an exaggeration. This is the only thing that really surprised me. I was very happy when he accepted my offer. Life became the way I wanted, and suddenly, he ran forward. When we finished hugging and kissing and Matilda told her mother that she was going to call me daddy, I wanted to suggest that we pack our bags and tell her parents our news. I have a surprise for you, he announced. She reached into her purse, pulled out a small white plastic object and handed it to me. Congratulations, Dad. I looked at her. There are two blue lines in the small window. I had to watch it again to understand what it meant. My eyes were wide open and my mouth was open. I looked at Sarah and she nodded. Yes, I've been traveling on the sand dock for five weeks now. I hugged and kissed my future wife, Laura. Today I was walking downtown and saw Dan across the street with his wife and two children. I had to watch it twice because at first I wasn't sure it was him. When I looked again, I realized it was actually him. He was accompanied by a woman and a girl pushing a stroller with a child inside. The woman turned out to be pregnant. I think it's about six months. They are laughing. A girl about four or five years old held Dan tightly by the hand. That's when I realized what I would have had if I wasn't so crazy. My life was a series of one night stands and short lived relationships. I saw him find happiness, but not with me. Karma bitch, Dan. I have to say that when my arranged marriage to Laura ended two and a half years ago, I couldn't have predicted what my life would look like. I found what I wanted. I found a woman I could love and who would love me back. Sarah is amazing and makes me very happy. Besides my wife, I have a daughter. Matilda is an influential person. Sometimes I say it runs on nuclear power and doesn't have a switch. 
I think she liked having a father. My parents are very lucky to have grandchildren to spoil. My dad even modified the interior of his truck to accommodate a real passenger seat with a forward-facing child seat. I didn't ask him to do it. He just did it. My mother loved to cook for the children, even though they were only one year old. She continued talking. Sarah is pregnant with her third child. We bought a new house and it's new to us. This is a big old house that I want to renovate. Sarah designed it and I built it. Your father said we should start our own business. Maybe you were right. Once the baby is born and everything calms down, we will make a plan. At the last family barbecue, Sarah's dad and I were talking and they told us they had an idea and some funding if we could sit down and talk business. I'm not sure I need your commitment, but we can talk about it. I just want to make sure I can provide for my family. Sarah, I thank my lucky stars every day that I found such a wonderful man. Dan was a wonderful husband and father. Matilda loved him to the moon and back. Our baby Adrian is one year old, and he and his sister are holding daddy tightly with their little fingers. The third child is on the way. I think it will be a boy. Every now and then I think about Dan's ex, Laura, and I can't help but think that his loss was my gain. How could she be so stupid as to lose this man? He was willing to overlook her flaws just to win her love back, but she gave it to every man she met. Silly. Well, I needed to take care of my family and get back to work. You should always remember what is important to you and take care of it first. Subscribe to our channel so that the second drop does not deceive you and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you are under 18 years of age, please do not listen to the following episodes.